Yes, yes, yeah. You are tuned in to Offering Something. I am your host, Michael Bernie. You're feeling so good to be alive, that's for sure. Offering Something brought to you by the good people at Enjoy Your Life brand, Spicket River Brewery, and the Higher Education Music and Arts Festival. If you're watching on YouTube right now, click that sub- subscribe button, hit the notifications bell. You know, I I love you, love you, love you for that. We have an unbelievable episode for you today with a guest who is an artist of many mediums, a creator, a designer, a sign maker, and I can make that happen kind of guy, a magazine cover man, an inspiration to many, an acquaintance turned into a friend, and he is consistently offering something. It is my pleasure to introduce Andrew Bablo. How are you, brother? Good, man. Yeah. How are you? Thank you, man. I really I appreciate feel that. great. <laughs> yeah, excited to be in the room with you. That's the Hell truth, yeah. man. Yeah. Me you... too. Me too. Thanks for having me, man. I really appreciate oh. it. It's an honor to be back here. I was saying to you earlier, I'm like, yeah. it's, it's been, I think, like seven or eight I years. Think, yeah, so. I think you're accurate since we sat down in the same room together. It's It feels yeah. good to be back. Yeah, man. it's nice so. that you look really good. It's good <laughs> to see your face. I appreciate that. All right, let's pretend we just walked into an elevator together, right? And I'm someone that you are, like, dying to work with. You want to be working with me. I get in the elevator. I push 12. You were going to push three, but you're like, I'm pushing 14 so you can get a little more time in there with me. And um, now we're in there. You want to work with me. How do you break the silence? First thing. Second thing, you got like 30 seconds to like give me a reason as to why I want to connect with you when I get off the elevator. What do you do, man? And why do I want to do it with you? Oh shit! That's yeah, a really, well, really let's hard get question. right in. I'm like grinding <laughs> into it, sticking man, the shovel pitch. in the dirt. First yeah, thing. holy shit! What do you got, um, man? I, you know, I just say like, look, man, I am doing something that you. You tap me like you hit me in the yeah, arm. Like, look, hey, man, I'm I'm gonna do something that you've never seen before. It, it's gonna be unlike anything that you've seen before. For, you're either in or you're out. Yeah, you know, like that's that's gonna be my pitch. Be like, you either gotta believe this guy okay, or you gotta you be like, ah, my interest. Bullshit. What's what's the industry? A- exactly. So <laughs> well, and then that's when we get off the elevator and I say, All right, here's if you want to see a little more, I'll give you another taste. But I mean, it's a really hard thing. I did that for years. I was marketing for years and like to peace. Hanging out in elevators for yeah, years. Yeah, well, yeah, that you well, know, there's that sometimes. guy. I know what he does and you just follow him. People do that, man. Hang Sometimes. out in the building, they're like, oh, there he is. I'm going to follow him into the elevator. So that's kind of my pitch is I guess it's more the the intrigue is really kind that's of where angle. I come from. Like the yeah, that's, that's my about angle. It. That's my uh, so used when they're car calling salesman you, they angle. They have no idea what you do. They're like, is Andrew available? Yeah. <laughs> uh, what are you calling about? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so um, where are you from, brother? I am originally from upstate New York, western New York, but we call it upstate because anything outside of the city is All right, so upstate. you're really in upstate western New York. What What's the town? It's Sorry. it's called Corning, New Corning. York. Corning. That's actually not even the, the, the real Corning. town that I'm from. See, nobody even knows. Like, Corning is like, people are like, oh, yeah, I heard of the glass. I've heard of the, Is that like, supposed to be a city, like, out in that it, way? It is, yeah. And what's it's the like, real place I, I think it's where like 12, you came? it's like 12,000 people. The real, the real, pub. the real town. Why are you that telling I am me from? other towns? I want to know because I the... think it's funny as hell. I didn't know it was a weird name until like Good I would golly. hear my parents on the phone order something, and they'd be like, "I know it's a weird name, but the actual name of the town I grew Uh-oh, up in." Now I'm concerned. <laughs> Should I be? No, it's just a weird name. The name of it is Painted Post. So I swear to God, man, that is the name. That's the so... name of the town. And it painted post New York. <laughs> I'm going to guess the name came from because it was absolute middle of nowhere. There was one painted post and people would be like, take a ride at the painted post. Is that it? Or is there it another a, reason? It, it went back to like Native American days. So like the, the Indian tribes there, the Iroquois, they had a post <laughs> that was that was painted allegedly, I guess. Okay. 
don't quote me on this history too either. I mean, they beat us up in school about this, but this is the best of my knowledge. But they had a post there or whatever, and people would be like, "Oh, that's where the two rivers convene." And there's a little, there's a post there that's painted, and that's where they would go to trade. painted post, New painted York. post, baby. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm coming out of painted now, post. Now, uh, I'm sure that you haven't <laughs> visited painted post in a while. What's, where do you sleep at night? I mean, I'm in Beverly, Mass. So I'm right down right down the coast, uh, North Shore. Beverly, Massachusetts, yeah. on the ocean. Yeah. Um, what, were you going to say that you do go back to Painted Post? I do, actually. <laughs> yeah, I do. Why? I, I go back. My family's your all family's still there. family's in Painted Post? They're still in, in that Painted town? Post. In that exact same town. Same house? Same place. Go in your old bedroom? I still go back there. Yeah, but they repainted it. It's all gone. So It's all gone. All the glory is gone. Oh, yeah, geez. they got rid of that. It's they like took a, down your trophies. It's a sewing room now, so oh, yeah, okay. unfortunately. Wow, it's you've been overstock. replaced by the thread and the needle. <laughs> so what exactly do you do here? Let's just honestly. Well. Uh, your resume states that Andrew Bablo does what? It's, it's a lot of things. Well, if I'm in a crowd of people that I don't want to yeah. talk to, I just say that. Uh, <laughs> I just say that I'm an accountant, an accountant, and then no one wants to really talk to okay. me. I'm sorry to the accountants out there, but no, I'm. I, I think the best <laughs> way that I'm still figuring out what the hell that I do. Would the would the big genre be artist though? I, I call I call it visual artist. Visual. That's artist. what I've landed okay. on now. That I, like I that. think sums yeah. it up. I, I I feel like that's. A I want to use that. I'm gonna. Use you like that? that? Steal yeah. it. I stole it from somebody else. Yeah. Another artist. I think I flirted with it for a little bit, <laughs> but it, it helped. It it definitely helps to I paint mean, the picture. It's a broad spectrum at the yeah. end of the day. Like visual artist is, uh, it's kind of a cop out, I think, in a way. But I like it because, I mean, when I say graphic designer, people are like, oh, he makes brochures. You know, and it's like, that's not what, I, I don't really, I don't even like using the computer, <laughs> but that's my trade. You know? So is the majority of your stuff on the computer or are you out there with paint brushes right. and et cetera? Yeah, people... Right? So I, uh, it starts on the computer. It goes to a tangible product usually, yeah. Yeah. but a lot of times I'll do branding and logos and I work with a lot of hospitality and yeah. small businesses, the big businesses. And then we take that, that digital product and turn it into a tangible product. So whether that's apparel or it's a mural right. or it's signage or it's a custom piece of furniture or a cool piece of art, you know. And then we go and install it, at, you know, deliver it, install it on the site. And it's usually a restaurant, a bar, a brewery, cafe, a hotel, you know, I something gotcha. like that. So, yeah. So that's where I come back to visual artists because it's a weird. You come from an artistic family out there and painted <laughs> posts where they paint things aside from See, posts. Well, painters, yeah. So yeah. we painted everything. Everybody's a painter out there. Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, growing up, my, you know, my mom's side of the family was very artistic. Visual artists or some other <laughs> yeah, kind well, of artists? I guess, I'm not sure they want to be defined as visual artists, but they, um, you know, one went to a fashion school. My aunt did. I got and, you. Um, so she was very creative. She was also a painter. Into the arts. Yeah. So my, yeah, that yeah. whole side, you know, my mom always really backed it really hard. And so that, that side of the family was what really pushed the arts, I think, for me anyway. When did you actually make a piece of some sort or a creation, a piece of art, and then present it to the public and go from whatever you were doing, your doodles <laughs> or your designs to like, I'm ready to show this to people. Was it the first piece? Did it take you a long time? Was there an inner struggle there? Like to say, I'm an artist and here it is. Were you scared? Did you not care at all? I had this path. It's kind of weird because my mom, like I said, my mom really backed, you know, my art, my yeah. artistic ability. And she saw what I was doing in school when I was young. And she's like, let's go down to the store. I'll buy you paint, you know, and she would get yeah. me a little bit of paint and some, you know, those little canvases are real yeah. hard, you know, and yeah. I would paint and stuff. So I was doing that really young and it was never like, you know, it wasn't like it, it was very modest. Right. And, um, but I always did that. And then as I got, into like middle so school. So you're saying it was stuff. very normal for you to be painting Absolutely. things. You weren't drawing, like, didn't feel painting. the pressure of it because it was something that you were often doing. Always, yeah. So now you're in middle school. I went to middle school. And How many people are in the classroom at well, this Painted is Post actually, Elementary? So I went to a bigger school, but uh, I mean, there were like You went all the 30. way out to Corning? Is that <laughs> yeah, what you're going to yeah, say? Yeah, that's why I say I'm from Corning, but 
Yeah, because that's like the out there, bigger that's town. like, oh, you're from Corning, and you're like, not really. <laughs> Maybe they'll know that town. Yeah. So um, I don't know. There was like, you know, my high school had like 800 kids in it, so it was a good size, but it was okay. like a very big area coming into one school. I got you. But I was, you know, they had like a local art show and stuff. Were and the so, Painted Post kids welcomed at the high school? We, Were you we, like, we, it was in Painted Post, but they called it Corning Painted Post. Oh, okay. But we had kids from like Pennsylvania. I mean, we had kids from... I don't know how that works, but that seems far. It's We would have snow days, <laughs> yeah. and then we'd have no snow down in the valleys, but these kids that lived up in the hills had so much snow that the buses couldn't get through, so it kind of worked out. No sledding on snow days. No, no, not for, not for the valley kids. So before I started asking you questions about your middle school and... Where, what was going on there? You were drawing at home, and now we're in middle school. It was kind of stepping up, and, you know, I was in these local art shows. They would have mm-hmm. one for the school district every year, and so that started happening. Then I got into high in school. In, like, fifth grade, you're saying? Yeah, sixth, it started happening, like, fifth or sixth. Yep. Yeah, okay. And I was in that every year. Were you winning? Were you winning? Oh, yeah. You always get the, you get, like, first through Everybody third. Everybody wins. Yeah. You, oh, no. You, you first might get through first, second, or third. first. Yeah, I, I, I guess. I remember. I think I had. You feel like, like you won every time? No, at first? no, no. All, no, blue, no, all no. blue ribbons? No, hell no. I mean, I don't remember if you didn't get a ribbon, but I think you at least got first, second, or third. But everybody's drawing got a first through third. In some ribbon. kind of category. In some category. I don't really remember how it worked. But Best overall, Andrew Bablo. But bl- you only got ribbon. in the you know school art show. You only got like one or two pieces a year, and if they were good enough for the whole you know district. But that was kind of cool, and so yeah. that that started kind of building you know my my path towards yeah. art. So we leave um, painted post. <laughs> At what point do you get out of there? Do you go off to college? Is yeah. there college involved? And where did that happen? Yeah, so I went to Montserrat College of Art down in Beverly. Gotcha. Um, this was, I started in like 03. And, you know, I went from having this big family in New York, it was, you know, a small town where you yeah. knew everybody, going out here to New England. I'm all alone. And it's all cold. alone, man. Knowing nobody at yeah. 17 and going to art school. How come school. these people not being nice to me? <laughs> and I didn't have like an old New England name or anything. So it was kind of a weird situation to be in this place where I didn't know anybody. And I kind of was like, I was 17. I couldn't even buy paint most of the time for right. like art class. You know, at college, and so you were renting your own place, or you were living in a college dormitory. They had, a, they had college housing, yeah. Okay, right so you're downtown. in college housing. Yeah, you and, didn't. Did you make friends with the people that you were in the housing oh, with? Oh yeah, yeah. You know, I was still getting stuff. Don't worry, I was okay. getting all kinds of stuff. But right. but is it was a weird situation to not really know anybody out here. Yeah, just of course, for you're the first alone. time, you're all yeah. alone, and then they're like, "All right, here's your career path. Right, you're here to do this." And so you you're like making art, and you're and you're realizing that well, this this is has got to be this is gonna be my career, right. you know? Yeah. And my parents were like, "Hey, don't like don't come home. Like, figure it out. Get it done. Yeah, get it done." So, so how long does it take to graduate? Did you graduate from? I eventually Montserrat? did. Yeah, you eventually graduated. Yeah, no, I did it in the four years. Yeah, you did it in the four years, and um, this. Okay, so you. <laughs> <laughs> you walk out of there. You still are you before you graduate. Are you already making some sales, making some things happen, doing some work? Or when you walk out of there, are you like, oh, good golly, what do I do what now? What am I gonna do? No, I I got this internship my junior year. Okay. Um, with a sports apparel company. Um, at the time it was called Old Time Sports. Mm-hmm. They've since mm-hmm. been bought by Forty Seven Brand. Um, so I, I don't know what that means, but so they're like you a, said it like it means it's something. It's licensed apparel, um, yeah. so it's like NHL, Major League Baseball. Um, I think they do some NFL. Okay. Um, okay. So I started do I started designing their junior year and this internship. I stayed on. I was their senior year, and then I eventually was like, they were like, hey, I mean, I had so few classes by my senior year. That I was doing like 30 hours a week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was still in school. And so they're just like, hey, can you cur- hurry up and graduate? Because we want to hire you full time. Boom, right out of the gate. Yeah. So then I graduated and I took like, I think I took a week off, which yep. what an idiot. You and know, how long did that last, that job? 
And then I stayed, you know, I went full time and uh, the company grew. I mean, we grew from like eight people in Peabody, I think, to Peabody. we moved to Salisbury. We grew to like 45 or 50 people. Um, and so I ended up being, ironically, because of the rapid growth, I ended up becoming more of like a senior employee by that time. Look at that at um, age 25. Yeah, tw- I was like 22, you know. Whoa, boy. And, uh, senior. It, did, it didn't mean yeah. shit. At the end of the day, it didn't mean anything. But I stayed there a little over four years and uh, I just completely got burnt out. I. I'd had enough, which I know some so, people are going to be like, 22, you're 23. You got burnt out at age 22 with the corporate yeah, whatever, world. 25, 25, I was 25. And man. then you started a new fire. How? So I had, when I was in college, yeah. I had started this little, as my senior thesis, this yes. little magazine called Steez. Yeah. And you know my stays. I had to say that. Exactly. Right. So I started that as this little, like, you know, culture mag. It was on a black and white photocopier. And, um, we, you know, it was skateboarding and snowboarding. And it wasn't very broad at that time. Right. And so I, kept, I always kept that going in the background. I felt like that was definitely where my passion was outside of design. At, like at magazine. The sports apparel. Yeah. 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 But I didn't know anything about that business or that gotcha. industry. Yeah, And so as I kept that going, things were building and, you know, I brought on, you know, some great friends came on board. You're selling and, ad space. Is that what's yeah, going on? But it, it didn't really happen until I, I finally left my job and I just had enough. And this was like, right. This was in like 2010. Yeah. I left my job and this was like, you know, the other side of the recession. And I, I walked out of there. It was like early, early 2010. I'm like, I've had enough. And I called my parents and I was like, hey, I, I, I know you guys aren't going to be happy, but, <laughs> yeah, but I, I quit my job today, today, you know? And they're like, what? It's a, it's a recession. Like you had a good paying job. It was your career. You, you had benefits. Yeah, you, had you had insurance. You had a 401k. What the hell? Oh, honey. You had a five-year plan. Oh, honey. <laughs> oh, honey. And I'm like, no, it just wasn't, it wasn't the path. And they're like, honestly, we knew this was coming. Right, right, right. And, uh, and from that day on, I just, I hustled and I pushed so hard to, to build the magazine and, and we all did. And everybody kind of rose up with me and, you know, we, we started doing all these things and we, you know, we started printing bigger, uh, right. more pages and selling more ads and bringing in full color. better yeah. talent, full color. Yeah. We weren't on the copier yeah. anymore, bigger distribution. And then finally I got a deal with, uh, Ingram periodicals to distribute right. um, internationally. So that put us How on. does that happen? How does Ingram connect with you? Were you pursuing it or did they come was, at you? Yeah, I was trying to figure out how do I get into Barnes & Noble? How right. do I get into these big, big bookstores? So I found out there was only two companies at the time that would, that would distribute to them. Okay. And so I went to both of them and was like, hey, you know, got a new publication. The first one turned us down instantly. They were just like, no, nope, have a good day. It's too wild. And at the time there was really only Barnes and Noble was the only, uh, whatever the other one, what was the other one? I forget I don't the know, name. I don't remember. Yeah. Anyway, the other distribute distributor came back and they were like, this is cool. Yeah. We'll, we'll take a chance on it. Like, yeah, we'll distribute you. And I was like, like holy Whoa! shit, it happened. And then overnight we're literally, we had already been, independently distributing to all 50 yeah. states but now we were actually on in all those bookstores those legit retailers you and i'll never like forget go, oh, yeah. i'll never forget going over uh, to the mall and i went into barnes and noble and i bought that first copy off the shelf and i found it it was like you know they and i moved it to the front which yeah, is illegal yeah, you're not supposed yeah. to do that <laughs> and so i moved it to the front whenever i yeah. moved the stack and then i go up to the register and i'm like is this actually gonna work like we had to figure out how to get a barcode and all this yeah. stuff and i hand it to the lady and i'll never forget that little that black and green screen up there that yeah, shows your price and everything yeah. it just comes up steez s-t-e-e-z and it was like five bucks or whatever it was and i'm like holy shit this it's actually real. worked oh it's real my God. and i bought that first copy man and um yeah we stayed with ingram for 
uh, probably another, it was at least another three or four years until yeah. we finally said that was it. So, so yeah. So, it, Steve's, that magazine acted as like a launch pad for you in many ways. I'm sure you established so many connections through that that eventually helped to establish like what you actually do now. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. you pretty much summed it up, man. <laughs> yeah. Hey, are you healthy? You take care of yourself, Andrew? I mean, enough. I should probably do better. What do you mean enough? (laughs) What are you doing to take care of yourself? Just enough. Just enough. Your mother wants you to take care of yourself more than that. I'm back. I've been back mountain biking. I've been back hiking. I've been back, like... Just even walking, I know it's you, not like you're back my, to walking. Yeah, but you know what I mean. Not like why I mean, I'll walk, but not like walking for fun. Like my, I walk with my girlfriend. We'll walk like I don't know four or five miles. I don't walk around town. It's weird to me. Like I gotta Do you meet run? people, Are you and talk to people. I don't. Are you breaking a sweat? I at don't all? like running. I play ice hockey. I like super play physical. Ice hockey. I snowboard. I okay. I play ice hockey. I like um, the cold stuff. I like kind of the yeah, I like the cold stuff. I've been out kayaking has been a big thing. When you're thing. going for a dessert, are you into like the ice cream sandwich as <laughs> I'm opposed into all to the of cake? That. That's you're the into all of that. I'm into all of that. But yeah, this has been So you know, if we thought about from activity. this minute right now to the last time you broke a full body sweat, like <laughs> shirt wet from exercising <laughs> or whatever, when was that? That was just like a few days ago. Okay. So all right. I've that been is. back riding um I got a new bike. Riding, that's the terminology for snowboarding. Is that what you're I've been do- I, no, I'm talking about mountain biking, mountain biking okay, now. Okay. But yeah, I've stayed. I've been riding. Uh, I've been snowboarding still actively every year since I don't know '95 or '96. So look it's been that. a long time. I'm getting old. <laughs> you look fantastic. <laughs> Thanks, man. I mean, unbelievable player. Um, you too, man. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I really appreciate that. So you've made a ton of uh, storefront signs for businesses such as the porch, let's eat, Joe's on a roll, seagrass faces on pleasant, 1620 workwear, true north ales, and on and on. Like, how did that just happen? So right around was that a plan? Right around 2015, uh, we closed the magazine. We finally said, you know what? That's it. Like we we accomplished everything that we ever came to do, and then some. And so at that time, it was a natural. You're kind of over it. You know, yeah, like- I was. You know, I think for me, I wanted to f- start focusing on the things that I wanted to do. Yeah. And the thing with the magazine was, we were always. Reaching out and highlighting what everybody else yeah. was doing. And, yeah. like, I know it sounds selfish, but I had a lot of dreams that I still wanted to pursue outside of the magazine and in, and an so, art career and a design yeah. career still. So um, I naturally just transitioned it right into the design house. And I thought, why not take this, like, culture and this background and turn everything that I learned with the magazine and everyone I met and turn that into – you know, kind of a weird, totally different, I wouldn't say totally different, but a much different concept than what you see of a design studio in New England, where it's very traditional and it's, you know, it's like we design stuff and it's on the computer and then we hand it off to somebody else. And I'm like, no, I'm like, fuck that. Let's, let's, let's design it. And then make it. And let's make it or paint it and like, let's deliver it and install it and and be the one stop the whole way. Right. And so I still have a lot of design companies send me stuff, and then I Do you have any it. control issues? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> no, <laughs> I like, part? but that's the thing as a designer, and you know as, like, yeah. an artist, like... It's hard just want, like, oh, yeah, I did my part, give it off. You're yeah. like, no, 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 no. Yeah. That's you, not... That's where you put it? No. You want to no, see your not. product delivered, you know, you don't want to, like, take a picture yeah. and let somebody else print it. And then, like, they do, like, a shitty print, even though your picture was phenomenal. Right. It's in the gallery, and people are like, ah, the quality Uh, of this is, like, looks like they use cheap ink, and, like, it's a crappy frame. So so that's where it's, like, I just wanted that product to to go out. Make sure it was a proper representation of what you were visualizing. Absolutely. And that worked. And that's how you end up doing the signs. It worked, man. And I, I honestly, I had worked so hard with the magazine to, to focus on marketing and like how to get out there. And then with this company, I started doing, you know, I do a big mural in a restaurant and, or I do the brand for a brewery. 
and then nothing i wouldn't do anything to market it i wouldn't call the newspaper i wouldn't right. hit up magazines i wasn't but then they would hit me up and they'd be like hey we or i would i'd get uh tagged on something people would be like oh do you know you were in this issue of north shore magazine i'm like no, I had no idea. Dude. <laughs> you know, there's my work and there's my name, and I'm like, holy shit, I'm not doing anything. And I got paid. Oh god. I got paid to do that work already. Yeah. So the the marketing side of it just came. And I right. as I did one, it snowballed into another and then yeah, another. Yeah. And and so it kind of spread like that. It was such a weird juxtaposition of the self promotion stuff that I was so used to, the guerrilla marketing, you know? Yeah. So, I see. Was there ever like, now uh, in my intro of you, you amazing <laughs> human being, I said, you're in a guy that's like, I can make that happen. And I see that in some of the things, a lot of the things that you do. But let's talk about these, uh, these signs again. You ever get there or you, you take on a job that you're like, I can't, how am I going to do? I have no idea how I'm going to do this. I've told them I can do it. And it comes down to it, and you're you're a little stressed out. I don't know if I can pull this together. Absolutely. Uh, you know, in the beginning, I didn't have the studio space, and I didn't have the experience with a lot of these projects. The first big job that I took was this mural, and it was a fifty foot. It was two fifty foot by twenty foot murals. It was yeah. two thousand square feet. I had no idea. I didn't even have a truck at the time. So I would, I would pay another guy that was in the building to use his truck and go down there and like, and then I would find the vendor and the paint. I didn't really know what the hell, and that's happened to me a whole bunch where I was like, all right, you're getting paid to learn. Yeah. What is the process? What is it? Do the research, you call people, you figure it out and you kind of, you screw up yeah. and you screw up a couple times and then you fix it and then you learn and you get better and better and better. But yeah, and then I got to a point where I'm like, okay, do I really need to be taking on work that I don't know how the hell to do it? Everyone, you only want to learn so long, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so on the on the mural thing, let, let's talk mural. So you have these massive pieces out there that are like finely tuned. They're so detailed, like, and I see them and I'm like, wait, how? No, he must. Hmm. How the, how did he how did he do that? So like these huge pieces that are perfectly straight lines from top to bottom. Like how how do you execute these things? And then like uh, on the mural, like the hallway murals in yeah. Colorado. Yeah. Let's get back to huge murals. <laughs> you have these pieces all over the place. Yeah. How do you do that? Is it like you've you're in this? Are you on a lift? What do you what do you on? Like how are you do you're on a lift? Yeah. Usually, um, if if there's a budget for it, I always get a lift. Even yeah. if there's not, now I'm getting old and I don't want to be on a ladder anymore. So I'm like, I'll just get a lift for the day. But prior to you'd actually have a ladder leaning against oh, yeah. these huge things, I've climbing done, over with the paint, absolutely. making the line, getting as far as you can with the line, we taking the ladder down. We did a 200 foot, the underground mural that we did in Boston, that, that whole piece across from Ink Block. We, there, we had no lifts, no scaffolding. And the union guys, when they were working on the building, they kept coming over and they're like, where the hell's your scaffolding? Why do you have scaffolding? You know, and I'm like, uh, I, I didn't have... You're know, like, yeah, man. Yeah, I didn't have the space for it. I didn't have, you know, I didn't have the equipment or any of that stuff at the time. I That's was just... incredible. So we did it all on ladders, man. We're reaching up on the high... You know, we're literally like on the highway uh, on-ramp. And we hand painted that whole piece, and there was, I mean, did it come out tens like tens of thousands the, of people a day? It was beautiful, and people were like, "I didn't realize that that was even something that anybody would care about or would be like, holy shit, these guys are hand painting." But when they would see us, they would roll up at the <laughs> intersection. They get stuck at the red light. And it's the summertime, like this, and we're no, we're literally. It in the blue. I'm Whoa. running a straight line, twelve feet in one dip of black paint uh, on yellow and i'm just like this oh my god and i'm just gosh. running it straight the whole way cuz you're laser focused doing yeah. these lines and people are like 
holy shit, man. They're like yelling out the car window. They're like, I cannot believe you just did that. Like, and I'm like, what? I just painted a line, man. It's not that big of a deal. Whoa. And they're just blown away by that. Wait, so where is that exactly? How do we look at that? That is on... Um, that is right across from the Ink Block buildings off of I-93 in Boston. It's like exit... It's probably like 16 or 17. They're right next to, to I-93. And I think it's um, Travelers... I think it's Traveler Street that goes into South, into South Boston. Comes right across under the underpass. And that's that whole uh, Ink Block underground. Ink, ink block, block, yeah. Area. So the black yeah, and yellow mural... What's the name did, of this mural? It's got a name. It's called Underground. Um, but it says underground, but it's like broken up into black and yellow stripes. Damn, it's man. a 200 foot long piece. <laughs> so yeah, it's quite a piece. Just your wrist, just you and your <laughs> wrist out there. It took us weeks, man. It what? took us weeks. And actually, at the end, this kind of funny story is, we only had a little section left, and I had a crew there that I hired because it was a huge piece. And I so I sent one of the guys over because I knew we were gonna finish that day. And I said, go over to Whole Foods was the closest place. Mm -hmm. I said, go over to Whole Foods and buy a bunch of beer for us. So, so he went over, he bought some beer, and we were literally drinking on the sidewalk painting this thing. And we ended up screwing up. And we painted the the lines that were supposed to stay yellow. We painted them black. Yeah. And we left the parts that were supposed to be black. We left them yellow. So we were drinking beers on the side of the road right there with all the cars going by. And we totally screwed up, and we had to wipe it all down oh, and no. redo it again. But we did finish that day, so it was still – Wow. It took us a couple of weeks you to know, do that I piece. I can't but believe it. No more, no more beers on the job, guys. Yeah, no. <laughs> Not till the very, very, very end. So with all this going on right now, um, what's the goal in that world like, are you dreaming of doing a mural the size of a state? Are you wanting to do more hallway murals? Are you dreaming about doing signs out in Vegas? Like, what are you? You know, I've, you know, I have my, uh, myself and Helen Poppinchalk, another artist, we have a pet project called Yucca Fountain that we did in Colorado Helen last what? year. Poppinchalk. Pop and Chuck. Yeah, crazy name, right? I love that name. It's a great name. I forget Pop the origin Jack. of it. Yeah, it's a good origin. <laughs> it's a really cool Pop name. Jack. Yep, sorry. So yep. we did this project called Yucca Fountain where we rebuilt this 50s, 1950s diner. Amazing. In a gallery Dude. in Colorado. So so that's our pet project. That is... Can you explain? Like, I, I try to understand <laughs> this and I go... What's your Instagram situation? Yeah, it's at Steez Magazine. So go to at Steez Magazine and look at this Yucca Fountain stuff. And I, my mind is blown, but I just don't, I can't quite understand what it is. Like, is it an actual place? Is it a, a what is it, an install? Like, what is it? it? So this is so hard to explain, but it is an installation. So what you see is, this is, I, I need to think of like how to exactly explain this, but we rebuilt a burnt down defunct 1950s soda fountain diner yeah inside of a gallery in colorado in a 2000 square foot gallery we rebuilt the whole facade and and the majority half of the interior yep. inside of the gallery and then as you walk out of the diner but you're still inside the gallery we put down 9 tons of gravel so that you feel like you're in the nevada desert and then we brought in the camper of the guy who saved all these plans and these drawings. Bert Tuttle, we brought <laughs> in his camper. So so you're you're on the outside. So you walk in this building, you go in the gallery, uh, and you're immediately transported outside into the desert. There's a camper on your right, and you're you're in the desert and you're walking in this gravel, and there's this huge diner on your left, and you walk inside, and there's the booths and the the counter and you sit okay. down and you eat dude and it's like so you can actually get food there absolutely at this point? yeah on so our it's a funk so all right so my first thought's like how does this get paid for like who is like what <laughs> what is this i don't i don't get it so it actually is in a position of producing income so this was a gallery installation yes and so it was a temporary show it was up from november to march he took it down he tore it all down what is wrong with it's you? It's yeah. insane. I know. Everybody was like, wow. you can't tear this down. People thought it had been there for 20 years, 30 years, 50 years. 
Did you have to take it down? Can we, we did. Talk about it was that a temporary more? show, and we actually had several more stops at museums oh. to rebuild this entire diner again in the same, but in a bigger yeah, gotcha. setup. So that's my pet project. Myself and Helen um, have been working on this. Is there another location? Is, is something else set up? So unfortunately, due to COVID, we lost, oh, right, we lost right, two right, shows. Right, right. Um, that we're still trying to salvage, but I right, will right. little sneak peek. One of our shows is still on. It was supposed to be 2022. So okay. these shows are years in advance. Yeah. And they're, obviously this is a huge project. Um, I just can't believe that that's what's going on. I love it. So th- we do have, you a don't show. take the same gravel from state to state. <laughs> no, no. We matter of fact, it's hard to get rid of nine. <laughs> it's hard to get nine tons of gravel in a gallery. It's hard to get rid of nine tons. Were of you gallery. a part of running gravel. the wheelbarrows of the gravel, spreading out the gravel on we the were little able hill over to there? Back the truck in, but I had to go to the gravel yard nine times because it was a little, uh, it was like a Nissan Titan or like a... Oh, my god! I forget. It was a little teeny truck, man. And it was like a little Honda. And This is what people are doing out there in the world. You're out there... It's crazy. Recreate. It's amazing. People it's think beautiful. I'm crazy. I am, I guess. People think I'm crazy. I don't think you're crazy. <laughs> I think you're super normally weird. <laughs> oh. You happy? I mean, enough, I guess. I happy wish, enough. I wish that... Uh, is happiness a realistic goal? Or is happiness know. just an emotion that is associated with... I feel like I it's know. a temporary emotion. I okay. mean, I could be wrong. Maybe that's my negative... So that's what, the pessimistic side of me. I don't know. Okay, now let's just get back to the original question here. So <laughs> you're, you're kind of happy. Yeah. There's some things that are I lacking, mean, though, that, you're, that don't fulfill your happiness scale. I had this incredible year last year. I was in Colorado for three months of the year. You know, for the most part, I had some really challenging family stuff. I lost my mom last year, which was oh, like gosh. a huge event in my life. And I wasn't uh, I wasn't there as much as I should have been. Right. And so that was my whole life changed. Yeah, you I'm know? sorry about your and mom. Thank man. you, man. No, yeah. I appreciate that. But I, and you know, I, I, I'm still working through that. And I think that, you know, happiness for me has probably changed from where I thought it was about my career and about these cool projects and, and these things that I wanted to do. And it's turned into more of like, you know, what's tomorrow about and right. what, what can I be doing with my fam, how can I reconnect how with family and friends? How am I going to spend my time? What's the bigger picture? Yeah, you know, and so, um, so a lot of things have changed for me, and I think that, uh, you know, happiness is kind of like a day to day thing. I really in a. Do you find yourself know. sad and depressed and like in a dark room painting like a weirdo <laughs> artist? Like, do you do you fulfill like that? that? No, do you fulfill that stereotype of the artist? I think for me, it's closing like, the shade. Do you sleep with the shades closed? <laughs> yeah, of course. You do, of course. Yeah, absolutely. See, you think I that's have normal. To. I have to. See, that's that's sad. Keep the shades open. I need Try the that darkness, out. Work man. with the sun. I, I need should. the darkness. I just want to sleep under the stars, to be honest. That's I all I want to do is sleep outside. You're on welcome the beach. to sleep outside of the I'm, studio. I this may stars, sleep out yeah. back tonight. It's a little yeah. cold, though. It's like the coldest night. It's, of it's the really year, cold. Actually. You'll, you'll maybe make it. I'll sleep in the back It'll of the truck. It'll be something to talk about <laughs> yeah, if you survive till tomorrow. That's true. It keeps you alive, man. Wow. But yeah, I think the situation right now, I look forward to the other side of this and what that means and i think for me coming off of this crazy year where i had one of the biggest projects of my life coming into this year where i just kind of feel handcuffed as a creative and i'm i'm sure you feel a lot of that very much so it's a total career change i've talked about it before but yeah my career is was eliminated as a result of the uh situations in the world temporarily right but i i'm not the type to wait i'm out here carving new lanes that's, that's right, why man. we're in this room and i'm with that's you right. you great person <laughs> <laughs> see i appreciate your positivity yeah, man, man. I mean, what else am i, I gonna do, do? bro honestly like waiting is not an option that's today's right. a good day i'm gonna make it yeah. better if i can i'm gonna put in the work to make it happen that's right yeah bro you gotta take risks um yeah you so you know with with the Steez magazine thing when that was going on, you wanted to work with 
Ingram or whoever the other company was. You had that, yeah. like, I, I want uh, excitement to, like, make that happen. So with your current situation, is there somebody that you're just, like, fixing to work with? You're like, man, I would love a collab with whoever. <laughs> oh, I would love to partner with these people. Who's that? You know, that's a good question. Like, maybe I... somebody just, like, a gross fan of... You know what, though? I was enamored by the whole brand thing when I was... I like your use of enamored. Thank you. You like that? that? Yeah, Yeah, that's a big word. I had a few of those written down before I came in. I was like, I got to bust this out tonight. You just check that off. All right, I've used two. Enamored, done. I don't know what it means, but hopefully I nailed it. (laughs) (laughs) But I... I, You were accurate. I was good. All right, good. I I wanted to work with those big brands, those cool brands when I was with the magazine, and I did that. I checked that off the list. And, like Burn and Josh well, yeah, Walker. But, you know, we yeah. Had, yeah, yeah, we had Burn and Walker, and we had Vans and Burton and Nike and G-Shock yeah. and, you know, oh, yeah. and that whole list, and it was like, and that was awesome. But then I think when I got to the design company, I was like, you know, it's a lot of fun meeting with actual smaller businesses are new startups and not knowing but seeing some of their potential yeah and wondering like is this is this the next sam adams or is this you know and you wonder like where this thing could go and there's a lot of excitement behind that it's like this oh yeah it's like this ipo this new brand or this new stock is going to come on the market and what the hell is going to happen with these guys so there's some excitement with that that. life bubbling excitement yes but i think with the the fine art side to me was getting you know getting yucca fountain in that um university gallery was a huge you know hold on you know how you said it's hard to explain yucca fountain yeah as i read every one of your posts about it it's hard to understand Yucca Fountain, even in those. That's why I had to ask. Oh, I know. Him. Yeah, I just don't. My, even my closest friends are like, I don't understand. It's I out, get it now. It's now outside? Is it? Now I gave I you the it. book, though. It's up there. So wow. look at the book later, and you're going to be like, I'll oh. do some book looking. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a look book. I you, just don't, like you don't have to read it. I really need <laughs> to tell you that it <laughs> makes me so happy that you did that and that you're like going to do right? I don't know. I don't know if this makes sense, but that makes me feel good. I don't, good. I can't, and I haven't even been there, but that you're doing that, I can envision it in my own way. And I, based on you, and, and it makes me feel really good that you're doing that. I don't know. It's an ex- more people should be doing this kind of thing. It's an experience. And a lot of people have said, like, why would someone pay? How would they do? I want I, art what, to why be. Why would somebody? But I want I art to pay. be accessible. That's why somebody would pay, of course. You know what I mean? Like, like, it's like cool, for man. this, for this to cost yeah. like twenty thousand dollars. Like, how accessible is that to me and you and to the majority of the public? It's not, unless we go yeah. to a museum. But then, but then, what is our experience other than like a few minutes that we see it? So, for me and for Helen, Yucca Fountain was an experience where like living art. It's more than vision. Everybody got yeah. to go and sit there and eat food in it and be a part so of it cool. and like get their picture Did taken. Did you try to get? I know yeah, that we talked know? about your control situation here. Yeah. Were you like super involved with the food? And you're like, that's not the taste I was. that goes yeah, with we the were. colors that I've chosen. You it's, were. There's a lot behind that, and actually, cost. Well, they, did the chefs get a little bit like pro? We had up? to have the university. The executive chef came in, and they actually had to serve the food. They have an executive chef. This is yeah. like this is stuff I've never even heard of. I went to a small art school. We didn't even have food plans. We didn't even we have had food nothing, dude. Plans. Nothing like that. <laughs> so they had an executive chef yeah. and a team, and we had to hire them and bring them in. And so, yeah, everything down to, like, do you want sprinkles? Do you want hot fudge? Do you want caramel? Do you want, you know, what color sprinkles? What size bins? What wow. All of that. So, yeah, we – but it was cool. We get to be a part of that. And we served for the opening night all um, diner food at 1950s prices. So you got an ice cream sundae for, like, 35 cents. Wow. So it was kind of cool, I man. I bet the it tips was, were heavy, though. They were heavy when we actually raised uh, – yeah. I think we raised – Thirteen or fourteen hundred dollars for the uh, for the food pantry locally, which is pretty cool. So I mean, the the total of the bills for the night was like three hundred bucks, yep. but everybody tipped pretty good. So it's cool. so I know we, we touched on some of the negative sides of the pandemic. And <laughs> how it just sucked the life right out of so many things. But something that is good that did come from it. As a pandemic comes, a lot of people are like, what am I going to do? They get their little ideas. 
And one of the ideas that comes to you, or maybe it existed before and it came to fruition at this point, is, you know what I'm going to do? It's pandemic time. I am going to make some architectural birdhouses. <laughs> How does that... First, this is a two-part thing. Yeah, right. Forget All about right. what it actually is. Like, <laughs> how do you have a thought of, I'm going to... You know, man, architectural birdhouses. When did that inception of that thought come to you, Andrew? That's a really good question, and uh, I ask myself that a lot, too. But I... <laughs> Because you seem like you're like really fantasize about it and you love it, like you're into it. I love architectural structures. Yes. I love those architectural buildings, tiny houses, tree forts and cabins. I think that shit is phenomenal, man. I have books and books on that and I'm always the looking at it. guys digging the little clay oh, houses yeah, the tunnels it, under the ground with the pool in it. Yeah, and they the, make yes. the coolest yeah. shit out there. And that's, yeah. that's what mm-hmm. I wanted to do. I'm excited, yeah. But in my studio... I have a lot of space, but I don't have everything's got to go upstairs and out a door. So I don't have the space to build this like big structure or anything. Right. And it's also a lot of money to put on the line for something that you don't know if it's going to sell. I don't hey, want to market. You don't want to build a I don't want to market for yeah. it. It's not my market, you know? Yeah. So as I was looking at this and thinking of this idea, it was during the pandemic, and I'm like, all right, I've had this a few ideas for these like contemporary structures, contemporary homes. So I'm like, why not make it into a, like a small 3D model? And then I'm like, hell no, let's make it functional. Let's make it functional for... is key. So, yes. So I decided to make a birdhouse, and so I made this crazy architectural contemporary <laughs> epic. Birdhouse. The birdhouse and I'm like, is let's crazy. also like if I'm gonna make a birdhouse, which I've never done and and may never do again. I'm like, I might as well make something that is so different from this like super traditional market. It's and not, there like, is a not market. like any other birdhouse. There is I a mean. market. Like there's there's a dude in Canada that makes these things that go for like four or five thousand yeah. dollars. And they're massive. And I, I had no idea this How was. How big even, is yours? It's like this big. No, it's big. No, it's it's like this. This it's, it's like four feet by four feet. It's oh, a bird wow. condo, dude. Oh, wow. It's got like twelve condos. I know, and it's all the separate rooms it. are all painted so pristinely. So, you built a birdhouse. Is that is, is it? Am I dumbing it down if I just call it a birdhouse? I mean, I well, or I don't know. Like I call, call it, it a contemporary uh, bird condo or something. Okay, I don't so you, remember. You what built the... a contemporary bird condo. You took it up the <laughs> steps and out the door, and where did it land? So we shot it. We did a photo shoot actually up here on Plum Island with it. And yeah. then um, there's a couple pitches. It's out on the market. It is for sale. Okay. But there's a couple pitches. Can we talk a, price point? I know. Uh, well, it's a $3,000 birdhouse. Yeah, so okay. it's not your ordinary birdhouse. Yeah. So it's more. That's uh, reasonable to me. I associated time with that. Like you were like, yeah. I would feel like it should be 5000 right? But it's a birdhouse. So I get it. I mean, a, I a appreciate contemporary that. I'll bird I'll mark condo. it down for you. It's yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You can have it for three, even though you want to pay five. <laughs> so yeah, it's we have a few offers. I have a few offers on it, and um, you know, kind of exploring the avenue. I have no idea, yeah. but you know what? It gave me something totally different and creative, and I think it's like a scale model awesome. for something. So wait, you haven't actually been able to watch a free and wild <laughs> in the nature flying beauty go into the contemporary bird condo? They may not even like it. They might hate it. I have no idea. I was the reading all this all stuff. Are angled in, the, in it? Uh, yes, yeah, some are, but not super angled. I like angled. that when they built they their might. little nest. I don't know. I have they're no... Gonna build, I, there's are you a gonna, lot of science. I don't know. You see, the, the thing is, if you had this in your <laughs> yard... You'd be out there managing the oh, birds. Yeah. Like, you'd be like, no, you can't put that there. That's supposed to be, wouldn't you? Yeah, your rent's due. You're evicted. <laughs> Get out. Oh, golly. Um, <laughs> uh, beer can art, right? Yeah. Um, let's talk about that. You have done beer can art for Castle Island, True North, Far From the Tree, Gentile Brewing, and so on. And how did that develop? You know, when I first started the Steve's Design, yeah. my design company, when we transitioned over from the magazine, I'm like, I'm coming from this industry that is like really chill, really lax, this whole lifestyle kind of California 
industry, right? Uh, you know, snowboarding. Is skating. that in some sort of suggestive way saying that it's not chill and relax on the East Coast? Maybe it Northeast is. But Coast? That's my subtle like. It's passive a little aggressive, more uptight, like, passive like, yeah. aggressive. I'll come straight out and say it, it is traditional. And, <laughs> and it's yeah, pretty. Yeah, why? <laughs> tell you what they think. Yeah, yeah. it's okay. pretty hardcore, obviously here. So it's a whole <laughs> different way than that California culture, and so. I'm like, what are some industries that I feel passionate about and that I understand and that I think would be fun? So I s- immediately started targeting the breweries because this was five years ago. And like, this was kind of on the very beginning of the major upswing right. of all these brand new breweries. And so I tapped into that, um, you know, I kind of had a good time and I got in with a few of them and, uh, and then I was kind of like, all right, this is enough. So I started doing some labels and label development. I did a lot of the branding and, you know, for some of the brands, I've done all of it. Was it um, exciting it's, uh, ever? Is anything exciting to you anymore when you get to go in the store and you see, like, your label on a can? Is there any excitement for you I, I anymore? Has, been, has that also been sucked out of you? I think that's the initial narcissism of, of designing. Now you see it and uh, you don't even care? Of designing mass products is you're like, oh, there's my T-shirt. And then it's like, well, yeah, but we made 50,000 of those or 100,000 of those. and Or, you know, this can has been printed, you know, 200,000 times or whatever. And it's like, I see it now and I'm like, ah, cool. You know, I see it there, but I don't. I don't always buy it. Um, There's already. like the younger um, Andrew, uh, 17 years old, no <laughs> friends in his little uh, shared housing. <laughs> kind of want to slap you in the face and be like, bro, things are working out. This you got great. beer cans. Like, yeah. Just like, why don't you smile a little bit? Take that right? like almost happy to like a full happy. <laughs> like, take the step towards happy. Like it's working out. Deal with it. Right. Yeah, absolutely. He does. Do you uh, think you'd lose your fire if everything just worked out? Is that a fear of you? Like, do uh, you yeah. need to be? Probably. Yeah. 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 I fe- I've always, it's always a fear of like peaking. It's like, shit, have I peaked? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, cause then uh, what, like, then what the hell do you do? I wonder if that would like Bourdain. I'm like, did he say, and not to get like heavy, but did he say at one point, did he say like, not to compare myself to him, but was yeah. he like, but to do so. <laughs> but did he say, like, fuck it, I've peaked. I can't go any higher than this. Like, I'm on CNN. I, they give me everything. Like, What am I going to do from am, here? Oh, yeah, my gosh. Yeah, what do I do from here? You know, and I, I think that's I a, think there's a lot to do from there. There absolutely is, but I think it's a real fear with a lot of, of artists that you talk to. And I still love seeing the cans on the shelf. Um, you don't really care that it's much. Not, yeah, but it's not something that I'm try, I'm, like, going out of my way to do. I'm always the type of guy, for better or for worse, that when I do a project, I finish it, and I'm like, all right, this is awesome, celebrate, quick, and then I'm like, what's next? Right. I never want to look back and dwell on what I did in the past. I want to look ahead and see, like, what can I do in the future? So, Do you consider yourself successful, though? Are you allowing yourself, because I, I think you're, you're doing a great thing out there, and it, it the per- the perception from the outside world is success. But do you look at yourself? Hey, I'm Andrew. I'm I'm waking up in my bed. I got my <laughs> boxer shorts on. They're a little bit ripped. I'm going into the bathroom. I take my toothbrush. I'm like, geez, how you know I still ripped? need a new toothbrush? But I'm using it. Why am I squeezing this little bit of toothpaste out of here when I can afford toothpaste? And you're brushing your teeth, and you look in the mirror. Are you like? I'm a success or no. I'm only thinking about that. If, uh, I, to be honest, it's only if somebody has said like, Oh, you're sick. You know, Oh, you've been so successful. You know, they'll say in an email and I'm like, well, how do they know I'm successful? I'm not done yet. <laughs> you know? And that's, that's where I come from at is I'm like, well, my career's not over yet. How do they know that I was successful? Like, I won't know till it's over, right? Till they well, put me well, in the ground. I think you can be successful <laughs> amidst it. I suppose. So but what do I you mean, view yourself as? Are you, are you stating in any way that you view yourself as a failure until you're at the end? And then when you die, they can go, he was a success. That's actually, no, that's a failure good point. Failure in progress or? That's a good point. I Success I, on the way? <laughs> I right. guess for me, I'm like, well, maybe, maybe I could, you know, I, I at least have to maintain this or maybe I could do better or maybe there's still more to come. You never sit down and go, 
<sighs> you know, actually, I'm I'm gonna give myself a little bit of feel good time right now because got, it's working out. I fear that if I did, and if I did that too much, then I'd be like, I would be unmotivated. Never have a good going. day. Go out and spend like 350 bucks on <laughs> no, debt. No, no, hell yeah. I'll do that. I'll yeah, definitely like, you know do that. Guys, Absolutely. I'm paying for it. Uh, okay, I'll I had a good yeah. day. I feel, feel good. <laughs> I'll Not definitely do that. say that success is driven monetarily, but nine times out of ten, it's like somehow it has to be in the United States of America. So right, I guess it's right. directly associated. Our society. Everybody loves you, but you are dead broke, boy. Oh. You don't feel that successful. No. No, yeah. and I think that's a good point, though, is that, you know, I will celebrate it, but I don't want to dwell on it. And I think that that's what keeps me driven. And I think for me, it's more of a fear of not being driven anymore okay. of what happens if I don't feel that fire anymore that like you get too comfortable. And, you know, it's like even sometimes you get to a point where you start making some good money and you've got money now. And like, suddenly you, you're not worried about like, Oh, if I bought a new pair of boots, like, not is that, that going to set me yeah. back? Or yeah, like, it even matter, you're yeah. like, I don't give a shit. Just buy it. What's it matter? You know, $19 tequila drinks, $28 <laughs> yeah. tequila drinks. You you're go like, through oh, your taxes yeah, yeah. and you're like, wow, wow, dude, I spent all this money. I'm picking up bar tabs. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, but I don't, it, what's it matter? Like if we had a good time, right? That's what's important. And so, so I fear about getting complacent, I think, is... Well, on, on that note there with this fear of complacency and your constant drive and continuing to work and not taking any time <laughs> to feel good about yourself, which <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and tell you, that's a terrible quality know, to have. I know, I know. You know it's not good I've of you. Told. You should actually... You know, not, not it's not a boastful or conceited thing. It's a... like you, you're not dying on the sidewalk right. because your situation has <laughs> failed in that scale of things. You've succeeded to the point of where you can eat, have a place to sleep, a nice car, and you can afford your drinking habit. Yeah, of course. That's <laughs> it. You're right. No, it's something so, to celebrate. In these ways, you're a success. Okay? So if you want to call it success level three, <laughs> level four, but just don't view yourself as on the way because then you don't get to appreciate anything. It's like, oh, I'm dying. Oh, sweet. I succeeded. Uh, see you later. So on this topic of you're, you're always like thinking about doing your art stuff and succeeding and doing your design, let's say this. What kind of car do you drive? I'm driving a truck, actually. What kind of truck you know? are you driving, right. actually? I got right. an F-150. I didn't mean to think you, know, you were listen, a sedan guy. I'm from Painted Post. I drive a all truck, right, so all you right? Have a, you have a Ford F-150. Yeah, I got a Ford F-150. What color is it? Yeah, it's blue jean blue. Blue jean blue. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. You're driving in your... You're, uh, it's, it's early in the morning. You just woke up, okay? You're, you have to go get something done. You're driving. You're going to go pick up this piece to get it to this piece. you got to do an install. You're driving in your Ford F-150. It's blue jean. Blue the jean color, blue, okay? Yeah. You're driving. You get to a stoplight. All right, here you are. You're at a stoplight. You look down. You like go to fiddle with the radio. All of a sudden, the door flies open. I kick it in the park. I pull you out of it, and I, I'm like, I just grab you, and I jump into a helicopter. You have no idea what's going on. Bag over your head, helicopter. You take the bag off right when I'm flying up. I start slapping you. I'm like, wait, don't get mad. You can do anything in the world right now. I already talked to the people where you're going. It's all set. What do you want to actually do? And I'm sorry I slapped you in the face so many times, put a bag over your head. Your car's all no, set, okay. all that stuff. And now we're in a helicopter, and it's going to go wherever you want. Money's not an issue. It's already paid for. What do you want? What are you gonna do? Uh, no, it's not going to affect your work world, Andrew. Okay. What do you want to do? I want to be on a semi-deserted island. I mean, people say deserted <laughs> island, but you can't get shit on a deserted island. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I want to be I mean, fed. Hence the and term I want deserted. Somebody, yeah. yeah right. I, I want somebody to Nothing. like. I at least need a hammock Nathan. and like some some basic necessities, but. Yeah, I want somebody to serve Basic me Corona hammock. and rum drinks okay, yeah, and, okay. you know, bring yeah. me shit and food and whatever yeah. I need. Yeah. So, yeah, I like that's what they, I want, but I don't... You want them to bring it to you. I and like I it. don't want to necessarily be plugged in with society at all. So I want to be just far enough off the grid where, like, they can still get boats into the island. Yeah. And they can still get, the get supplies. You need. Yeah, you need some plywood, it's the, there. The, the basic, like, you know, the creature comforts. So... Would you say in any way, Andy, does anyone call you Andy? They yeah, call? they call me, uh, yeah, my family has all kinds of weird nicknames. Big A? For, no, no, that you're one a, occasion. You're a big A. They'll call me like 
you know, they call me AB because my last name's bad. They Drew? call me Drew, Drew Meister, Drewy. Drewster, Drewling. <laughs> I haven't heard <laughs> that one as my Drew. Um, would but, you yeah. say now that you've painted me this beautiful piece of view in this semi deserted island and people are just bringing you drinks and you have your hammock? And the boats can make it in, and there's the wood you need if you need to build something and a paint fire. and fire. Um, would you say in any way that what you're doing now with your life, your actual life, the things that you're doing with all this art and design, is it in any way a means to get to that? I hope. <laughs> I now, always tell people they're like what do you want to do and I'm like I just want to do well enough to just get on an island and and then if so I want to see you I'll tell you to come out and see me how much of the I think you're missing me here I know, how much I hear you. of what you're doing now would like would you be doing if that was already in place for you I think there's a thing for me of like well, I would still do it. Absolutely. Is it for fulfillment? You, I, you receive some... Fu- I'm curious. I mean, still, like this you said, though, questioning when you, you see knocking you. this on the shelf and you're like in this store and it's, you know, three states away and you're like, oh, shit, I, I actually designed that label that's up now there. Why, let's go even further. Why does that matter? Have you it been affected matter, by the media? I, like, does the media and, like, seeing famous people make you want to see your beer can no, in the no, store no, and make you like, what? There's that fulfillment, fulfillment there that you're like, all right, I did something that uh, hopefully I helped this company out enough that – that even though they're three states away, they're selling this product, and it's, okay, not, you're supporting not the family. Not the fulfillment and, for the credibility that you establish when people see your work on cans. Strictly the fulfillment for the company and what they the might reap for benefits. Were, no, the piece that you were a part of, I think, is the okay. thing that like maybe you helped out a little bit with this piece of design. You have like an or, issue with like pride, like and not, not like pride, like <laughs> anything that's like. <laughs> Um, a compliment towards you. You kind of like you just like. Sp- sw- I don't want it. it. I don't want it. it. I, I try to be. I I want to be humble enough. But you feel good. You feel yeah, good. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, good enough. You know. But I I want that. I I'm a part of these businesses too, and I'm a yeah. part of these projects. I want those to be successful. Yeah. And I know what it's like though, as a business owner, is like. I've failed too along the way. I'm sure you've experienced those things and it's like, you know what it's like. I mean, I've done these events that were complete failures and I'm like, that's a hard, hard feeling. That's a hard pill to swallow to be like, why did this happen? How did this happen? And how do I bounce back from that? Or, I mean, even in the beginning when I quit my job and I started the magazine, there was a lot of people. scared? People didn't believe in me, you know? And they were like, you know, and even How challenging is it to not listen to or to tune out the people that don't believe in you i had to go against everything that that i ever knew i mean there was close i don't want to say anything you know publicly but there was very close family that was like this he's an idiot you know and i know what they were saying was like this this will never work He's Why got a pipe dream. What is he thinking? Oh my God, he's lost. We thought we, he thought had it together, and yeah. there he goes. He's going to paint his way. He doesn't understand life yet. So yeah. he, that gave me a little chip on the shoulder, but it's also something that I had to think about for a while of like, how do I not just prove them wrong, but how do I make them see another side of this that this dream is possible, that you, maybe I can make this work and, and make them see another perspective? You think their perspective was the that which it is to many, which is the lazy artist guy that's dumb you down. You're just like, yeah, I just want to like sit in my room and paint and not really work and then say I'm an artist and I'm starving, but I'm just not doing anything. Did they think you were lazy? Do you feel that that association existed? I've, I've been to enough. I did enough events and enough projects in areas that were with the public where – 50% of the people came through and they're like, the first thing they ask you in New England and in Boston is like, who paid for this? 
How did you make money on this? They they're automatically defense. You making like, money? They're like you're pissed like, off. Like how did how did you get to do this? Like yeah. it looks like you're just having fun and you got you got you could have gotten paid. Is this when we're out painting the underground mirror? People are like, is this a high school project? <laughs> Hell no, it's not a high school project. They're they're selling condos for yeah. millions and millions yeah. of dollars up here. Yeah, this ain't no high school project, you know. So. I mean, that's the first thing that people think around here. And that's so I have to fight that stigmatism all the time of like, no, this it's not a this isn't a fucking charity project. This is this is my career. Mm. And so that that chip automatically is on your and I get paid and I and I I have to profit. You you, you also produce a, a good product. If I don't, I'm not in business. Right. What do you think about the people that look at you? In a way that you know, like look at Babel, he's just like he's just like painting things and like doing all yeah. this fun stuff. He doesn't he doesn't even have to work and he, he has work. all this money. Like he don't work. Your homies are like, dude, what do you do you even do anything? You're like, yeah, I'm doing stuff right now. I'm like doing There's, things. I think that people would never believe the amount of background BS that goes on that the amount of uh, you know, you or respect the wealth of knowledge that you have inside of your head. Well, yeah, there's <laughs> that. Oh, yeah, well, sure. how to actually make it work. But okay, but, but to yeah. set those things up, the state permits, the city permits, the the bureaucracy that you have to deal with. You don't just get to paint on a wall. Like no, no. there's all kinds of permitting, and Unless there's it's late at night and it's dark. <laughs> exactly. So, so you've got all this stuff to go through. There's emails, there's phone calls, there's meetings. So, I mean, there's piles and piles of this stuff that nobody sees, but everybody sees the bright, shiny, colorful, like, oh, that's the fun, like happy part, but that's not the only part of it. So it is a business and it's really hard. I mean, yeah. it's very competitive. So, yeah, I mean, that's the stigmatism that I have to deal with. Yep. But reality, it's a job, player. It's a job. Andrew is putting in work. You hear that? And it's more its more work than 40 hours a week. <laughs> That's the reality of it. It's hustling hard nonstop because you're building your own future. That's it. Your dollars come from your brain. Yeah, whatever That's that right, means. Um, let me say this to you. Um, now, all the guests that I have on this show here are exceptional in their field like you are andrew bablo appreciate okay? that yeah thank you and in combination with this exceptional skill and success <laughs> take that stop in stop. their field right <laughs> they're also individuals that in their lives in their communication with the people that they come across are offering something that makes the world a better place, whether it's just within that conversation in that moment or in all the waves that are created by your actions, Andrew. This is why you are here, because one, you're just a beautiful person. You're exceptional in your field, and I truly feel that you're offering something. In this world that we live in today, right, that we walk around in with our shoes on or our sandals and our pants and our hats and we see people, even people that we know well, right? We rarely either take the time or think it's accepted to compliment people. Like grown people to grown people, they don't, it doesn't happen often enough, especially with strangers. Yeah. So I wanna look at you and tell you because it's almost unusual to be like, hey, I'm over here, and I know our level, how well we know each other and where that is in the whole scheme of the world, but I'm confident to, from where I sit, what I see of you, to tell you, man, I'm proud of you, and I think you're doing a great thing, and it makes me feel good. It makes other people feel good. You're, it's inspiring to know that a human can just go from post painted post new york <laughs> to beverly mass to carving this exceptional lane like it, what you're doing wouldn't exist without you you made it you built it out of nothing like you just drew it up in your head and made it a reality and y you deserve to hear people tell you that is incredible it's it's it really is amazing and all that stuff that goes with 
oh, you do this hallway mural and people can try to dumb it down in their heads. They don't see all this other stuff and you don't get told enough. Uh, maybe you do. But I'm comfortable to tell you, man, you, you're doing a good thing. I'm proud of you. Thank you, man. Smell oh. these roses <laughs> while you can. Yeah, I appreciate that, and and likewise to you too, man. I I absolutely respect everything that you've done. It's thank so you. I I really appreciate it. Hey, we're we're talking about how great you are today. <laughs> before you get to, I know you're gonna wait until like three days before death to f feel successful. <laughs> so I'm giving you some of that now. Just a little sprinkling of it. It's like the, the color of the sprinkles that you had to pick at the Yucca right, Fountain. Right. I'm giving you some of those sprinkles right now. <laughs> All the colors. It's a rainbow with me. I'm throwing it in there. You're a good man. How do you feel about that? Thanks, man. No, yeah. it's, it's... I've heard it. I'm just... Like I said, I know I'm always... I'm just absolute humility. So I, I absolutely appreciate that. Yeah, and man. I'm... I'm always, and I think that is a driver for me in my career is when I hear people say like, man, I went to this show and this was so cool and it inspired me, inspired me or inspired my kids or, you know, my kids wanted to do this because of you. And I, I think that that is really special to me. A kid coming up in You're painted, sweet. You're painted Post New York. I didn't get a lot of culture then. It You're was a sweet person. <laughs> You're approachable. It's just like all the things that can happen to a person to turn them into a monster. Like you have to make those decisions, whether you're yeah. consciously or subconsciously making them. You can, I'm sorry to use the word success. I'm not trying to, to like, you know, <laughs> but you can either become a success and just be this gross person, an egotistical maniac that doesn't care about anything. You just think you're great and people keep buying your stuff and like, it doesn't yeah. matter. Or you can do the exact same thing and ha be successful with the sales of your product and all the things, but be an amazing human. Yeah. So you didn't have to make that decision. That's the guy that you are. And that's, I, I value that. Thanks, Here I am man. complimenting you again, but I just, I really value that. Thanks. You, you could just be terrible and you're not. <laughs> it's an option. And a lot of people just become monsters and you're just a good guy. I think it's the humility that I, I grew up with. and You have good teeth, too. Where I came from. Doesn't Are you sure much about coming, that? Doesn't mean much coming from me, though, right? Yeah. <laughs> or me. I mean, shit. <laughs> hey. No, I mean, that's part of the humility of uh, of where I grew up, and I think that I learned a lot by that. I wouldn't trade that for anything. I know it's a, you know, it's like this little town, you know, it probably is, you know, 1,500 people, but I think that that is what gave me so much respect for all the other places I go when people are like, Oh, you know, this place, whatever. And I'm like, man, like, yeah, but you had this, this, and this. And like, we didn't even have that option when I was a kid. We, I didn't even know about a lot of that stuff. And yeah. to have those resources here when I moved out here and I was like, Whoa, public transit. What the hell is that? Whoa. Like we don't have that, you know? And it's like 10 people in one place. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Wow. You know, so it's hey. something to appreciate. You were getting gifts when you were a kid from from your mom. Yeah. Um. You like it? Do you like Do you like to to get gifts? <laughs> you, you They're do. okay. No, I hate it. <laughs> is it alright if I give you a gift? Of course, man. Yeah. Of course. I'm to do that. Oh, is really well decorated box here. Oh, I'm excited. Oh yeah. Wow. Here you go. This whole box. Wow. All right, here we go. I get to open this. How do I, I even open it? Yeah, you see, see it? You there see, we see go. that little fold? I, yeah, there's a little fold in the bottom of it. Christmas came right early, up. man. Boom. I got it. Yeah. I love this part. It's the goody, 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 nice. goody box. Here it is. Let's see what's inside oh, what? there. Yeah. Let's see. Nice. Oh, New hat, man. Yeah. Hell yeah. You guys get yourself an enjoy your life Sick. hat. You, you, there's so many things you just throw them on the floor to this just side. Just throw them right over. Yeah, yeah, it's sure? fine with me. I'm comfortable with it. Very comfortable <laughs> with awesome. it. That's awesome. Let's keep Thank it you. exciting. What do we have here? Is that shirt? your color? That is that is. your color? Yeah, is that I, your size? It highlights my eyes. Oh wow! You know, I'm Scandinavian. So I, I, got I the find blue eyes. that people with blue eyes like to bring it up. You got to bring it out. You got to bring it out. I'm playing up on these qualities as I get older. Yeah, thank you, man. That's a that's good awesome. shirt there. All right, all right. What else is inside the goody 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 box? What do we got? Ah, uh, some. Okay, right, that's a free a, volt CD. Yeah, CD. That's good music. Nice. What's, thank you. What's that right there? What is that? It's a card. Oh, it it's a card. Oh, yeah. So I what like I'm it. doing here is like you know, 
proudly speaking on the, the fact that I have an agenda with this. It's that <laughs> I want you to take that card, all right? And I want you to actually cool photo. hand write a note to somebody like and that. mail it to them. All right. Even if it's somebody you live with. I like that a lot. Just do it. Will you do it? My par- my partner on you Yucca Fountain Helen, she writes Boom. postcards Write it all the in time. that right there. So, yeah. I love Helen. Did Absolutely. I already tell her I love her? I love you, Helen. Yeah, she, she'll love that. Let's She's very dig. nostalgic. There you All go, right, a nice face, face covering, you know. Speak of the times, man. There you go. Echoes I with the that. moment. Enjoy life face that. covering. Yeah, it's nice to see a beautiful smile, though. What do we have here? I, I think What's it's this? another shirt. Another shirt? This kid's getting geared out. Just what is this? Aldous Collins. Nice. Whoa. One of my Hell good yeah. homies, great artist. Aldous Collins has been on the show, the One Love shirt. I was just listening to the show yeah. on the way up, so yeah. that's awesome. Thank you. I think that Aldous might be a rich man off of those shirts, but he was just trying to do I a nice this. thing. I figured you're <laughs> a party guy. I was I talking about the I island, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so there it is. Wow, I'm, we're almost to the semi-deserted island. I've been known to do a few and parties. And what is that? This I know. Wow. Is this some words this on it? This is actually hand-signed. Yeah, Marcus Sebastiano. Yeah. Our boy. What's it say? And it says, battle from one old man to another. <laughs> Let's keep making great art, Marcus Sebastiano. That's amazing. Wow. Look at it's that, It's like he man. knew I was going to be on the show tonight. It seems like That's it, That's crazy. Right? <laughs> this is awesome, I man. love Marcus Sebastiano. A great show with him. Great artist, definitely. He's digging to the goody, goody, goody box, boy. He's another guy that just keeps yeah, me the inspired, CDs, man. You know, people are... Absolutely. That's actually my new album nice. on the right Couple there. more. But the CDs, are, I, I've said it before so many times. People mail me a million CDs. I'm trying to get them out of here. <laughs> I need some more space so I can get a birdhouse. I, I mean, have, a I know the bird feeling. condo. There we go. There Bottle you go. Water. Juice it. There you go. What's this? Oh, yeah. Couple just in cards. case you want to know my yeah. number or give my card to somebody. I'll give it out. Just don't publicly announce. Oh, Look yeah. At this. My wow. favorite part of it all. Wow. Billabong. Look at He's like, are these my size? Man, I needed these. Where were you like a couple <laughs> months ago? I was out of shorts. I couldn't go to TJ Maxx. <laughs> These are way better than I would yeah. have. Yeah, these so, are nice, man. I mean, the honesty is I'll make them here fit. that um, I'll make them fit. They uh, absolutely they were actually mine, and I really enjoy giving people pieces of my old. This clothing. is your clothes. That was mine. These I, are nice, so I'm still gonna take yeah, it. They're good. Yeah, they're <laughs> good. Those are nice. <laughs> That's for you. I thought about you Thank when you, I hand selected those. I really those. appreciate that. More CDs. More yeah, CDs. Yeah. Oh, wow. This is great. Yes, yes, yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Do you have a dog? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Perfect. Put those on your wrists or your fingers I, can I walk put it around on the neighbor's dog there you so go. I can see that friggin' dog? There you go. Keep that in your car for I'll when you need exactly it. I'll know exactly where Next time is. you see a dog-loving pal, you got that. <laughs> and another shirt. <laughs> What's this shirt? Shirts are like currency oh, for guys. You ever notice that? You walk yeah. out the door and guys are like, yo, what's up, man? How you doing? You're like, hey. Yeah, you go. They're like, you, you need a t-shirt? Yeah. <laughs> it's like every time I come back in the house, my wow. girlfriend's like, you got another shirt? I got three tonight. Yeah. That's how good it was. One, a three-shirt two, night. Three. Involvement music. Enjoy your life. Aldous Collins. What else is in that box? A couple stickers. I love the goodie box moment. I yeah, don't know man. why. This has been phenomenal. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Christmas oh, came early. Yeah. Hey, um. Andrew. Yeah. Let's do that again. Ready? Andrew Bablo, Steez Magazine. What do you think about the Spicket River Brewery beer that you've been drinking all this time? I hadn't had it before, and uh, I like it. I need another. <laughs> it's phenomenal, actually. I, I, I'm like, I love the can art, and I'm like, this is a really good beer. So... I'll, I'll definitely do another after this, too. Man, if you don't mind, if you're not out of beer Whoa, yet. No way. Spicket River Brewery keeps us stocked up, boy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love you, man. I just got a couple more things to say to yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. On this beautiful day here. Um, wow. Whoa. Can't do that. Any you have any bad habits? Uh, Anything that's slowly killing that I you? That can talk about? <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, nothing like that. No, uh, no, no, no. They, yeah, no, slowly killing me? I don't know. Everything, you know, stress? I don't know, but I love that. Smoking 25 cigarettes a day, no, anything I'm like not, this? I'm not doing that, you know, but yeah. I'm like, I keep it, I don't you know. You carry a lot of stress? I can't, not as much as I used to, to be honest. Yeah. Like, I'm like, I think this whole situation has stressed me out a little more because... 
my normal life is like that's not able to happen. We were talking about this earlier. This is like, normal right now, just so you know. Yeah, like, this no, is where we're this at. is, but like everything else, like you. not being able to travel yeah. and enjoy some no of that hotel stuff. rooms, yeah. all the things we talked about. Yeah, just just the normal stuff of like now I feel like I can't go to Vermont, I can't go to Maine or whatever, and oh, I'm like, strange. what the hell is that, you know? And for me, New England's one big state to me and i'm like to feel be, alienated yeah. in in those other places is a weird feeling so you just go for it man yeah absolutely you just go I, for it <laughs> <laughs> you want to try I something live by my own rules i mean what the hell we're gonna play a game that is not that fun you ready for oh, it boy it's called fast fun and dumb oh, do i boy. need to explain why it's called fast fun and dumb I have a feeling I, I might say I something dumb. So Yeah. It's gonna be fast. It's gonna be fun. You might say something dumb. That should be that should be, that I like that. That's thing. a good tag. Yeah. I'll work with that. All right. Here we go. Why? Fast, fun, and dumb. The idea is I'm gonna say it's gonna be a question. You answer the question. There's no you don't think. There's no pause. All right. I want no pause. Okay. <laughs> All right, no pause. Shit. You understand that? Yeah. It's no pause. Here we go now. Fast, fun, and dumb. We're gonna start easy. We're gonna stay easy. Fast, fun, and dumb. Favorite color. Dad, Blue. Dad, dad. Current favorite artist. Oh. Like painter guy, come on, here we go. Oh, anybody, my. anybody, you're thinking, you're thinking, you're ruining the game, no, you're ruining Paul. it. Single girlfriend married. I put too much thought nah, into stuff. Single I girlfriend married. Yeah. Favorite TV show. I like Shit's I feel Creek. bad Shit's for the girl that right thinks she's your girlfriend yeah, right now. I know, now. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right, yeah, I've heard of that show, I've heard of that show. Favorite rapper. Come oh. on, buddy. Don't tell me you don't listen to rap. No, I, I do, but that's a, that's a really, really favorite hard rapper, favorite question. Favorite rapper, favorite rapper. You're thinking. It's just, there's... Okay, I gotta go with pause, Outcast. Actually. I like Outcast. The rule of the game. I know, I know, Andrew but I, I think too much. Man, I'm not asking for much here. <laughs> I know. You are, right, I know, I put so much thought I'm asking a lot, stuff. but I'm not asking for much. Here we go. Keeping it easy again. Favorite way to waste your time. Favorite way to waste your time. Reading. Reading, that's not, that's not wasting a waste. time. I know, that's not but... a waste. Favorite food, favorite food. Macaroni and cheese. Really? Yeah. Really? Do you put a lot of pepper on it? I, no, I like the homemade stuff. Although every the it's Annie's, mac- the Annie's white yeah, Annie's shells, mac- that shit's yeah, good, though. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, I don't eat cheese, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what's your middle name? <laughs> what's your middle <laughs> name? Joseph. Joseph. The average Joe, yeah. Uh, really? That's my middle Andrew name, Middle Joe. America, man. Hey, Jay, up in a place. Truly, Jay. Ah, cats or dogs? Dogs. You already told me that you close your shades when you go to sleep, and this is something that I I need to talk to people about. I grew up in painted posts. We had no ambient light out there. It was just stars and moon. I just think I can't see that. That it's very healthy. I have an LED street lamp. It's literally in my You're third like floor window. You're living this little artist it's... like studio world. It's like Yucca Peninsula in this room. <laughs> you go over in that room. You're in a semi-deserted island. Because... I'm getting a tan at night by that street light, man. <laughs> like, I can't yeah. do it anymore. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, let's say a few more things here. How, how do we connect with you? It's at Steez Magazine, right, yes. on the Instagram. And that's- yeah, I can't get, and people are like, why don't you have the Steez Design handle? It's been taken, and nobody uses it, so I'm keeping the magazine handle. So Dude, let them keep it. Let me do what I want. Why does right? he have to be questioned yeah. on it? So, Bro, I- why are you making me do this? Yep, so at Steez, at- but Steez is the questionable spelling. S-T-E-E-Z. Magazine. Yeah, and if you can't so, spell magazine, I don't know. oh boy, you shouldn't be on Instagram. Nope. Okay. All right. <laughs> is there a website associated with what you got going on? Yeah, steezdesign.com. Yeah. Um, you can also check out Yucca Fountain, is yuccafountain.com, but you can also get to that through my site too. So there's no personal page for you out there on Instagram. No, I've kind of combined the company with my personal you endeavors. It's you a, are the company. Yeah, I, and that's you. the thing. I've talked to a lot of artists. The about weight of that. the world on my shoulders. That's why they call me Bablo. <laughs> that didn't really rhyme, but that's kind of. It wasn't that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love you, man. Thank you for you being too. here today. I really appreciate it. Definitely get hip to everything that Andrew Bablo has going on. Really beautiful works out there. Once again, on that IG, it's at Steez Magazine. Check it. You'll you'll you're gonna be like, what? 
what? Like, what is this? That's what he's doing? Oh, house? my gosh. What? Yeah. yeah. Hey, if you need a bird condo, <laughs> my man got you, player. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is there anything you need to say in clo- closing here? Closing here? I just want to say thank you, yeah. man. I really appreciate You're it. You're welcome. It's been a while since I've been back here, and it feels mm. good. So this yeah. feels normal. Doesn't it? I like that. So. What a time. Yeah, it's a weird time. Yeah, so, man. It feels good. Yo, people out there in the world, do this for me. And you do this too, right? I want y'all to play the compliment game. I said it on the old Offering Something show, but every time you find yourself in a conversation, find it in you to give a compliment. I'm talking about you at the cash register at the gas station. You got to say something. Oh, by golly, I love your earrings. That's it, y'all. This is Offering Something. My name is Michael Bernier. I feel so good to be alive. It sure has been a jolly good time hanging out with... (laughs) I was going to say golly good, but I don't know that that was going to (laughs) work. Jolly good time hanging out with my man, Andrew Bablo, Steez Magazine. It's a good life we're living. A whole lot of love to enjoy your life brand. Spicket River Brewery. Higher education. Wow. Wow, I need education. High Education Music Festival and all of you beautiful people for tuning into this show. That's it. I'm ready to get out of here. You ready? Yeah, man. I'm going to try to execute this smoothly. I've never actually learned that the microphone moved until now. This is offering something. And smile for us, Andrew. We out. Yeah.